Summary of Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Siji. Near the Chinese-Tibetan border, Luo and the narrator arrive at the mountain Phoenix of the Sky, a dizzyingly tall and extremely rural mountain. The village headman wishes to fire the narrator's violin, but Luo informs him that the narrator is a superb violinist who will perform a sonata titled Mozart is thinking of Chairman Mao. The headman gives the violin to the narrator. The narrator adds that he and Luo have been transported to the mountain to be re-educated by the poor peasants since they are deemed intellectuals by the government. Every day, the lads endure backbreaking labor and transport buckets of waste to the fields. The mountain is gloomy and wet, and the narrator plays his violin to cheer himself and Luo up. He adds to the reader that his musical talent may one day allow him to leave the mountain, whereas Luo's sole talent is storytelling. The only person who recognizes Luo's skill is the village headman, who sends Luo and the narrator to the city of Yongjing to watch films and then report on them. The little seamstress is the mountain's princess. The tailor teases the narrator about his violin after the narrator and Luo encounter her father, the tailor, on a mountain trail. Several weeks later, Luo and the narrator visit the tailor's residence to request that the little seamstress extend Luo's pants. Luo is obviously attracted to the little seamstress, but when questioned by the narrator, he states that the little seamstress is insufficiently cultured for him. Two months are spent in an incredibly hazardous coal mine by the narrator and Luo. After six weeks, Luo is diagnosed with malaria. The miners beat Luo to drive off the virus, and when they tell the narrator to take over, the narrator uncovers a letter from the little seamstress requesting that they visit to her village and conduct a oral cinema presentation. When the little seamstress realizes how a Luo is upon their arrival, she cancels the performance, tucks him into her bed, and administers a poultice on his arm. She summons four sorceresses to keep vigil over Luo. When the sorceresses begin to nod off, the little seamstress urges the narrator to keep them awake by telling them a story. Luo regains consciousness during the narrator's terrible recitation and utters the story's final heartbreaking line, causing the sorceresses to weep. The following morning, Luo is well enough to return home. When he and the narrator observe their companion for eyes battling a water buffalo in a muddy field, they pause. Farai suggests that his pals spend the night at his residence. When the narrator searches under Farai's bed for a sweater for Luo, he discovers a small, hefty bag. Farai's won't comment on it, but when Luo mentions that it includes books, he becomes panicked. On a snowy spring day, Luo and the narrator visit Farai, who has lately lost his glasses but continues to work. Luo offers to assist Farai in completing his assignment in exchange for a book. Farai disagrees but is unable to complete the assignment. Luo and the narrator assist him, and he offers them Balzac's Ursul Mirout. Luo stays up all night reading and gives the book to the narrator in the morning before departing. The narrator spends the entire day reading, and at the end of the day, he transfers a passage from the book onto the inside of his jacket. The next morning, Luo arrives early and informs the narrator that he and the little seamstress had their first sexual encounter. Luo and the narrator return the book to Four Eyes, who refuses to lend them any other books. One day, they discover Four Eyes boiling his garments, and he reveals to his companions that he was able to escape the mountain by collecting folk songs from an old miller. By insulting the old guy, he wasted the opportunity and contracted lice in the process. Four Eyes offers the boys a book if they can record the miller's songs successfully. Luo and the narrator visit the miller while disguised as soldiers. The others join him in sucking on salty rocks as the miller sings obscene songs. Farai's deems the song's smutty rhymes when the artists show their work to the band. The narrator punches four eyes when he decides to modify them. Luo, the narrator, and the little seamstress attend a movie in Yongjing. The following evening, they discover at the hotel that a mother is on her way to recover her son from his re-education. The following day, while waiting for his pals on a trail, the narrator meets this woman. She is the poetess mother of four eyes, and she reports that he has obtained employment at a revolutionary publication. When she leaves and the narrator reveals what he has discovered to Luo and the little seamstress, the little seamstress proposes they grab the bag of books before four eyes leaves. Luo and the narrator devise a master key to pick the four eyes lock, with the intention of stealing the books at the village's festive meal. The village headman of four eyes slaughters a buffalo, and he and four eyes drink its blood. 
Later, Luo and the narrator observe the celebrations before breaking into the home of Four Eyes. They discover a briefcase containing translated Western novels. When they attempt to exit through the window, it is locked. They hide under the beds upon hearing the return of Four Eyes and the poetess. When Four Eyes and his mother leave, Luo and his companions steal the suitcase and flee. Four Eyes never reports his books as missing. Luo and the narrator spend a month reading all the books in the suitcase when the headman departs for a party convention. The novel Jean Christophe captivates the narrator most. Luo spends his days visiting and reading to the little seamstress. When a storm destroys the mountain, it creates a treacherous path that frightens even the narrator, who does not have a fear of heights like Luo. When the headman returns, he is furious because the dental care he had in Yongjing was substandard. Since his father is a dentist, he asks Luo to fix his broken tooth, but Luo refuses. A few days later, the tailor comes in the village and decides to stay with Luo and the narrator. Before they retire on the first night, the tailor requests a story from the boys. The tailor is captivated by the Count of Monte Cristo when the narrator begins to narrate the story. The narration lasts nine nights. On the third occasion, the headman interrupts the narrator and accuses him of disseminating reactionary garbage. The headman threatens to take the narrator to the public security office, but if Luo can heal the headman's teeth, he will leave the narrator alone. The tailor makes a drill from the needle of his sewing machine. The headman cannot endure the discomfort of the improvised exercise, so Luo advises that the headman be restrained. The headman agrees, and the narrator begins to turn the treadle. He exacts his vengeance on the foreman by causing the treadle to go as slowly as possible. The work alternates between parts narrated by different characters. The old miller relates how he witnessed Luo and the little seamstress engaging in sexual activity in a hidden pool. Then Luo explains that he taught the little seamstress how to dive, and that she enjoyed diving for his key ring. He states that he must go for a month to stay with his sick mother. The little seamstress assumes control of the narration and informs the narrator that Luo's tales inspired her to dive. On the final day she and Luo went to the pool, they performed a scene from the Count of Monte Cristo, and she then plunged for Luo's keys. She was bitten by a snake at the bottom of the pool, and she lost Luo's keys underwater. Luo requests that the narrator keep a watch on the little seamstress while he and his sick mother are out of town. The narrator imagines himself to be a secret spy, and he generally enjoys the job. He begins to perform housework at the seamstress's home and discovers that he is extremely drawn to her. The narrator is attacked by a group of the little seamstress suitors as he walks home one evening. His Balzac novel is discovered, but the narrator escapes with only a damaged ear. That night, the narrator has a nightmare in which a group of suitors cut off his ear and the little seamstress saves him. He masturbates while contemplating her. The following day, little seamstress informs the narrator that she is pregnant. The narrator says that it is unlawful to be an unwed mother, to get an abortion, and to marry before the age of 25. The narrator travels to Yong Jing to seek assistance from the hospital's gynecology department. The female patients yell at the narrator, and he spends two days attempting to get an abortion without success. On the third day, he decides to seek assistance from the street-sweeping Christian preacher. The narrator discovers that the preacher is in the hospital. The narrator sits with the preacher and the preacher's family in the hospital as they attempt to record the preacher's final words. The narrator observes the gynecologist and follows him inside the examination room. He gives the gynecologist a Balzac novel in exchange for performing the abortion. The little seamstress will get an abortion on Thursday. It is a success, and the narrator presents the gynecologist Ursul Mirout and Jean Christophe as rewards. The little seamstress purchases tangerines for the deceased preacher and places them on his grave. The narrator fast-forwards to himself and Luo, inebriated and giggling, burning the forbidden books. He explains that little seamstress abruptly left after opting to move to the city. In the period leading up to her departure, she trimmed her hair into a bob, requested white shoes from the tailor, and altered her own jacket. The outcome was contemporary and fashionable, and Luo concluded that reading to her had paid off. The narrator states that at the time, he and Luo were unaware that the final phase of the little seamstress transformation had not yet occurred. 
A month later, while working in the fields, the narrator and Luo hear noise in the village. The tailor is in the village, and he informs the young men that the little seamstress has moved to the city. Luo and the narrator pursue the little seamstress down the mountain. Two hours later, the narrator discovers the little seamstress sitting in the cemetery. He stops and observes her reunion with Luo. As the two begin to converse, the narrator hears Balzac's name. He feels deceived because the little seamstress did not inform him of her departure. The seamstress rises and continues her descent of the mountain. The narrator yells after her, but she continues to flee. Luo informs the narrator that the little seamstress stated that she learned from Balzac that her beauty is a treasure and that she plans to try her luck in the city. About the author Dai Siji's parents were medical professionals in Sichuan province. As an only child, Dai would have been excused from Mao's Up to the Mountains and Down to the Countryside program, which sought to re-educate young students by sending them to work and learn from the rural peasants. Dai chose to participate, however, and he cites the allure of rigorous training as his reasoning. His experience being sent to live among peasants during the Cultural Revolution was the inspiration for Balzac and the little Chinese seamstress, which is semi-autobiographical. After returning from his re-education, he taught high school in Qingdu and studied art history at Sichuan University before receiving a scholarship in 1984 to study film in France. In France, he directed several films before turning to writing. Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress was his first novel, and it won five French literary awards. It has been translated into 25 languages as of 2017. Dai lives in Paris and writes primarily in French, though he does possess a Chinese passport and can travel to and from China freely. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.